health is in fact at the heart of human progress. And we recognize that the well-being of people around the world is not just an important end in and of itself, but it is strongly linked to the security, prosperity, and partnership of our country with our colleagues around the world. To achieve these advances, the GHI will invest $63 billion to this end. That's more than double the amount of money we spent on health during the preceding six years, and a significant commitment of resources during a very difficult fiscal time. GHI builds on remarkable progress in public health that we've all seen. Over the last decade, we've made huge strides through a variety of disease-specific or intervention-specific campaigns. The President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief is the largest single effort by any country to combat a single disease. The first phase alone provided antiretroviral treatment to more than 2 million patients and supported care for more than 10 million people affected by HIV worldwide. By all accounts, PEPFAR was a game changer. And to support its efforts, the administration is increasing funding for PEPFAR consistently and in greater ways than before. Our disease-driven focus can sometimes crowd out other cost-effective, life-saving interventions, even in Kenya. The Global Health Initiative is therefore about the patient, not just the disease. The initiative will enable country-led health programs to be smarter, more efficient, and more effective. We'll support community-based health systems that are appropriately staffed and stocked to deliver a broad range of health services and to reach back into more formal health systems when necessary. But let's not confuse ends and means. The ultimate target of the GHI is not to simply build health systems for the sake of building systems. It's to achieve more health outcomes and to sustain those gains over a long period of time. We as a donor community have an obligation to keep countries off of this seesaw of donor trends. And that is exactly what underpins the GHI vision. And here are some of its defining features. First, we believe in doing more of what works, a simple concept. GHI will expand proven treatment and prevention strategies in TB, HIV, malaria, and a range of neglected tropical diseases. And GHI will also create an environment where it's safe to report on things that don't work, because that's ultimately the only way that we can experiment and learn. Second, GHI will focus on expanding existing service platforms. Saving more lives means being smarter about getting the maximum impact for every dollar we spend in health. And this means getting, developing new insights and better methods for using our HIV, TB, malaria treatment platforms to provide a broader range of services. By being here today, each of you demonstrates your commitment to help us get this right and to help demonstrate to the world that we can save these lives in an efficient and sustained way. And I want to thank you for being here. I'm going to take the prerogative of the chair and start off with a, a few questions. You talk a lot about innovation and accountability and transparency and bringing a more entrepreneurial spirit, both to the process of aid and also to the institution you know, of, of USAID. Um, and I think you've even discussed, and maybe you've already begun, having what you've termed evidence summits. Mm -hmm. But I've also heard you talk about failure, failure summits, summits. <laughs> right? which is an equally important concept. Um, so I, you know, I'm wondering if you could say a few words about what you think the risks are. You know, what are the risks for GHI as you look out over the next five years? And more broadly, what are the risks for global health? I mean, what could we do wrong that could fundamentally you know, undermine the goals we've set for ourselves beyond money? We all know money is important, but sure. beyond that. Sure. Uh, well, good. I'm glad you said that because that was my first, my first point would have been, I, you know, I agree with everyone in this room that we need to continue to sustain our tremendous commitment to global health. Um, it is the largest of our programs uh, across our sectors. And we've seen a huge amount of progress over the last 10 or 15 years. So now is the time to really get this pivot to sustainability and systems right, uh, as opposed to walking back on the huge progress we've seen. With auster austerity measures being popular among Western nations, how do you lobby to keep funding in light of Americans demanding budget cuts and less government spending? Essentially, how do you sell your program to Americans who don't essentially directly benefit, nor would they exactly care about the benefits? Thank you. I think Americans do care. And I think if we can demonstrate 
that we do this work efficiently, that we're hyper-focused on value for money, that we are smart about building the systems that will sustain themselves so that we're not needed endlessly in this enterprise, and that this is a directly related to how the world perceives us and uh, to our long-term safety, security, and ability to partner uh, with other countries and other peoples. I think the commitment to support this work will just continue to grow. And we should all do our work with, under, with that fundamental understanding that people, and Americans especially, do care. That's why we have to make the work more efficient, more transparent, and invite them in to support the common enterprise. And with, with GHI, you know. Mm -hmm.